So there's four marks, so I'm going to count each as a half. So when I do that, and let's label everything in blue here. So this is going to be one and two. So I'm counting off each as a half. So at angle, I think we start at angle zero, we had two. So zero, we're out at two. I'll zoom in a tiny bit. Now the next one is, you want to be sure, remember, we're graphing R's and thetas. So we're not graphing R's and two thetas. So we're going first column, last column. That's always how you're going to graph. First column, last column. So don't get messed up and go pi over three, because we're going pi over six right now. So pi over six, one. Pi over six, one. And now, doesn't really matter the angle, we're going zero, the origin. And then three pi, no, pi over three, is that right? Yeah, pi over three is negative one. So pi over three is up here. So there's pi over three. And we're going negative one. Oh man, negative one. And now pi over two, straight down, well straight up, but we're going negative two that direction. So we get these five points right here. So again, this polar grid has uh, pi over 12s measured off on it. So it's a little bit tricky. So there's more angles than we're going to actually use. If I labeled all the angles, we got of course zero, pi over 12, which we don't use, and then pi over six, pi over four, pi over three, pi over two is at the top, and this one is five, pi over 12. We don't use the pi over 12s on this. So if you download some graph paper, some polar graph paper, it's very likely to have too many angles marked on it. So just make sure you skip the 12s. And connect them together. Try to be as smooth as you can when you do this. So obviously we haven't used symmetry yet, so we're about to start using some symmetry. Doesn't matter which one you go with first. You can either go across the x-axis or across the y-axis. Doesn't matter which way you go. So I think we found x first, so let's use x. So we're going to reflect across the x-axis. So all the points above the x-axis are going to flip below and vice versa. What about the two points that were on the x-axis? Where do they move? They move nowhere. And we'll graph from our first initial point over here all the way on the right side. So we're going to start on the right side and then connect them basically the same order that we did the first time, except we're doing all the mirror images. So we're going down first, oops, back up to the origin. Man. And finish it off up there. So now that we used x axis, you should see x axis symmetry, hopefully. Now we're going to use y axis symmetry. So I think you could handle the y axis symmetry. So you take every single point and take all their x-coordinates and make them negative, or just do the y-axis reflection, however you like to think of it. So there's quite a few points, you have to flip them all over.
Is there any questions on this final picture? This is about as artistic as it's going to get in math class this quarter. So if you like art and signs, enjoy. We'll be done with this by Wednesday after the quiz. Still need some algebra though, and you still need your trig values to get there. So I believe this is called a rose. This is a four leaf rose. Kind of looks like a propeller a little bit too. Roses don't really look like that. That's a different flower. Rose petals are like blobby, like that. Yeah, it's definitely not rose. That doesn't matter. Somebody called it rose a long time ago and it stuck. So we're gonna do one more of these problems and then I'm just gonna tell you to look inside your book and do problems out of your book. So this is the last one that we're gonna do. This last one's gonna be a little bit different and you will see why. So, so this one we just did use a two theta. So how does that affect things? We had to basically take our angle and double it and that definitely changes symmetry quite a bit. We have to be careful when we check symmetry. So our last problem we're going to find symmetry, graph and find symmetry. So this one is difficult in two ways. We have, again, theta was doubled. But also, there's something else that's weird that he didn't see before. What else is strange? R squared. So R squared. So what we're going to have to do is when we get thetas, we're going to have to basically square root at the very end. So if I solve for R, the best I can do is plus minus 2 square root sine 2 theta. So I square root of both sides, but remember when you square root something squared, it's plus minus. So that's where the plus minus comes from. And I just applied the square root on the 4 and then the sine 2 theta separately. So we're going to have an r column and a, or a theta column, and then eventually we'll get to our r column. But before we do that, this is our original. So we're testing symmetry on the original. So you test symmetry here. I'm going to do something a little weird. I'm going to go origin first. So origin, you could replace data by pi plus data or r with negative r. So there's two ways to get origin symmetry. I'm going to go with the second way. I'm going to replace r by negative r. And the reason is because I see r is going to be squared. So it doesn't matter if I put negative in for r. And negative r squared is regular r squared. So we pass. So remember, always happy when you pass your first test because it means you only have to check one more. You're not going to have to check two more. So I want you to test. Let's go, I think x-axis will be the next easiest one. Although let's go y-axis just to switch it up. So test y-axis. See if you can remember what to replace data with. is pi minus theta, and then run your test. So 
So look at your difference formula for sine and see what you get. Two, uh, so I did, I did write 2 pi minus theta. And then I did a tiny bit of algebra. Because I couldn't use a difference formula in the first line, I had to go to that second line to use a difference formula. All right, so apply the difference formula. And I'm going to give you everything inside of this box right here for your quiz. So you don't need to remember the difference formula. I'm also going to give you the approximate, the decimal values that we'll use. So all of our symmetry tests come from up here. So that was our uh, origin test at the bottom. There's two choices. We said there was basically two names for, for that point down there. So it's a little bit tricky. The origins, although one test is kind of obvious if you can replace r with negative r and succeed. It's so pretty much if it's squared. You should have gotten negative the right side. Can you go back to the formula? Yeah. Should go sine sine cos cosine. So we use the minus, so the minus on both sides. The other one's weird because the minus turns into a plus. The signs are flipped. All right, so we got origin, and no, so we failed y-axis. So what can I say about x-axis? So we can't have two, so if I passed origin and passed x-axis, we would have two. So that can't happen. 
So automatically, we had to fail x-axis. Now, unless you feel like you're running out of time on the quizzes, I would go ahead and check all three. And if you get two of them passing, obviously, there's a mistake somewhere. So you can use it as a way to check. If you pass two of them, obviously, that shouldn't be happening. So if you pass two of them, you go back and recheck each one and make sure that that's really what should be happening. All right, so we got origin and none of the others. So let's think about what origin symmetry gets us. So you always do the first quadrant. So if I use origin, where's the first quadrant go on origin symmetry? Maybe easier question, what is origin symmetry? So you can either think of reflecting across the origin, which is a little strange, or rotating halfway around the origin. It's a little bit less strange. So if we rotate halfway, quadrant one is going to rotate down here, quadrant three. So we have a choice. We could either do quadrant four and one, and then ro that rotates down to two and three. Or we could do one and two, and that'll rotate down to three and four. It doesn't matter. Let's get a little crazy and do the top half. So we'll go zero to pi, and then that'll rotate down to the bottom half. So this is a choice you're going to have to make on your quiz. Where, what, usually it's going to be two quadrants. Unless you have all three symmetries, you're generally going to graph two quadrants. So you're going to do quadrant one, and then what other quadrant? It's almost always going to be an adjacent quadrant. All right, so we need our table of values now. I'm going, of course, 0, 2, pi. There's all the angles we know, 0 to pi. Those are all the thetas. Now, there are some. We need to first double our theta. So it's 4 sine 2 theta. We need to double our theta. So let me rewrite the, uh, with the r squared. So it's plus minus 2 square root cos 2 theta. So we're going to have our two thetas here. Then we're going to cosine those two thetas. And then square root this. And then double it. So go ahead and fill out this chart right now. Doubling theta is very easy. Uh oh. Yep.
Can you type in that square root of square root 3 over 2 and get the decimal for that? It's going to be slightly less than 1, but I think it will be very close to 1. three for that guy and one squares to one what's wrong with the last three square roots here square root negative so what does that mean? Imaginary numbers. This middle one's very easy, actually. That's i. However, we're not graphing imaginary values. So all of our functions that we're graphing are real number input, real number output. So all of these imaginary ones, get rid of them. They're all out. So what that really means, these values are not in the domain because they're square roots of negatives. So they're all out. If we originally started here, uh-oh, well, yeah, it wouldn't be in the domain. Even our original problem didn't have a square root, but if we look very carefully at our original problem, the right side certainly could be negative. We saw values that make the right side negative. Sign's negative quite a bit. Can r squared ever be negative if it's real? No. So that's right there on the original problem. Even though there's no square root, r squared we know is never negative. So whenever the right side's negative, that's not going to be equal. There's no r value. It's going to be negative when you square it. So we're almost there. We're going to double everything here that we have. The only one that's a little tricky So we have this little tricky part at the end where r is actually plus this value or minus this value. And so we'll deal with that on the graph. Are, yes, you're going to have to do all this in your quiz. So about to, I'm going to write up problems from the book to do for practice for your quiz. All right, we again have biggest radius is 2. So we're going to do the same scale as last time. So we're starting out at 0. At pi over 6, we have almost 2. So there is pi over 6. So that would be 2 right there, but we don't want to go out quite that far. So we'll go right to there. Now we're going pi over 4 all the way to 2. And now back to 1.86. And then again, back to zero. So we started at zero, went to these three points, and then back to zero. So let's go ahead and fill that out right now. Maybe this one's called the rose. That's more believable.
Actually, this one's not called a rose. All right, what about negative bars? So I just did the positive versions. Now we'll do all the negative versions. So same angles. So we just took care of the plus, all the positive bars. Now we'll do all the negative bars. So let's start at negative zero. That's not going very, very far, right there. Now we're going negative 1.86 in the pi over six direction. Negative two and pi over four. Negative 1.86 and back to zero. So there's the two pieces on the graph. So our symmetry is origin symmetry. So you rotate halfway around the origin. Is there any work to do? Or do we already have that? We already have that right there. And it came from the fact that r was basically plus or minus, which is exactly how we got the origin in the first place. So r could be positive or negative for the same angle theta. So we already used origin, and this is our final graph right here. So homework. So I can't really have you graph on web work. So you need to graph book problems. These are page 956, numbers 1 through 20. So they have all the graphs already in the book. No. I want you to do this and then show me you've done this by passing your quiz. Okay. So there's a pretty good chance I'll choose either one of these questions or something pretty close to it. There are not that many types of polar graphs out there. I think there's about five or six types that we did. So there are not a huge number of graphs. So what we're going to do now is an algebra problem. So our next, next topic, intersecting equations or graphs of equations. So we have graphs now that look a little strange. Maybe the least strange one's a circle. And then there's some weird, let's say there's a propeller right here. How many places do these graphs intersect? Let's look, there's four places, points of intersection right here. Now, if these are all R1 equals uh, oops, not F. So we graph two different functions of theta, so I call them f1 and f2. How do you intersect functions? You did it in rectangular coordinates, or you should have. So I'm going to find, let's call it, uh, are not theta naught such that r naught equals f1 of theta naught and r naught equals f2 of theta naught. 
one of the same radius, same theta. Unfortunately, things are not quite this easy. So this is sort of the nice version of what can happen. What happens if your r equals 0? Does it matter what angle you're working with? You're at the origin. So you have to check your 0 radius separately. So unfortunately, that's not the only problem. What if you had So this looks a little crazy. These are the same point. How in the heck are these the same point? What at, what's the difference between the two thetas? Oops, I should put theta not. Sure, one theta is there's a pi added to it. What does that do on a graph? What does adding theta uh, pi to a theta do? So it shifts at how much? It's weird to think of shift. It's a rotational shift. So how far? It, so it's going to be a half rotation. What happens when you make the radius negative? It flips over to the origin. So if you point the opposite way and then say go negative that direction, it's the same thing as going positive the original. So polar intersections are a lot more tricky. So we have this problem. So these might be the same points. And what about if you had r naught equals you could have it you could be off by a certain number of rotations. That could also be happening. So there are some other things that you have to worry about as well. So let's do an example here. So the first thing we're going to do is graph each of these. The one on the left is actually easy to graph if you turn it into your rectangular coordinates. The second one you have to graph by hand the long way. So I want you for homework to graph these two right here in your notes. Then we're going to come back tomorrow, do a bunch of algebra, and find where they actually intersect. So Draw, sketch as good of a graph as you can, and we're going to come back tomorrow and intersect them.